It's a beautiful, beautiful evening, everybody. Welcome to this great session in financial management. So this introduction is going to be a very important one for both financial management and, of course, advanced financial management. And we hope, we hope that uh, this helps you to see other things that you need to think about. It's going to be an amazing session, and I hope that you enjoy yourself. I'm going to be your amazing host. My name is Shadwick, and I'll take you through this first class. So this is the first class that we are using for our June 2023 sitting. All right? If you're writing in June 2023, this perhaps is something you don't want to miss. All right? It's going to be extremely amazing. So give, just give me some feedback, guys. If you can hear me, I'll be very grateful. If you can tell me that you can hear me, that will be very helpful. Uh, it will be fantastic. So are you able to hear what I'm saying? Can you hear me? How is my sound? Somebody give me some feedback about my sound. This is our first ever class for June 2023 sitting of financial management and advanced financial management it's the introductory class, all right? So tag somebody, invite somebody, and give me a comment if I'm, li if I'm loud and clear. I'll be very grateful to know that information. So guys, somebody give me a comment. Just let me know. It's good to see you. Festa, bridal, and events. All right, so we have George. Hello, I would like to I would like to more details about your whole program, tuitions. All right, fantastic. We are going to talk about that one uh, in a bit. For now, please give me give me some comment, guys. If you can hear me, thank you so much, George. We are going to respond. This is the first class for June 2023 sitting. All right. We are doing an introduction to financial management. So this is going to involve financial management and, of course, advanced financial. It's the same introduction that we do for both papers so that we can put you, you know, to speed. So all I need now is a comment from one of you guys. Somebody give me a comment. Just let me know. If you can hear me loud and clear, that would be fantastic. I need a comment. Are you able to, to hear me loud and clear? How is my sound? Somebody give me a comment as we get started. This is going to be amazing. You're going to enjoy yourselves, people. It's going to be amazing. Somebody give me a comment. Am I audible enough? Am I loud and clear? Can you hear me? Give me some comment, people. I would like to hear from you if you can hear me. Okay. Somebody give me a comment. Am I loud and clear? I would like to know if I'm loud and clear. All right, so let's go. Somebody give me a comment. Guys, give me a comment. Am I loud? All right, fantastic. Chris, thank you so very much. Okay, very good. So guys, we now get started into tonight's business. All right. So tonight's business is amazing. All right. We are looking at the introduction to financial management. And what could be better than that? Right. What could be better than that, people? Introduction to financial management. That's amazing. So let's get into it. So when we talk about financial management, guys, what comes to your mind? What do you think when you hear the word financial management? What comes to your mind? It's extremely important that you understand what financial management is. And to get our ball rolling, of course, I'm going to share a, a few things from my side, all right? I'm going to share a few notes. My notes are, are, are very, very different, okay? So I'm going to share a few things. Financial management, guys, is simply the management of finances of an organization to achieve a financial objective that must be understood from the outset. So maybe just to, to share a few, maybe just share my screen a bit. I'm going to share my screen a bit for you to be able to follow through. Of course, I've put some, some few bullet points that you can use to follow through. So basically, financial management is simply the management of an organization to achieve a financial objective. That is what we refer to as financial management people. It is not something complicated. So companies have what is called financial targets, all right? So for those financial targets to be achieved, the financial manager must be able to do certain activities that are going to help him to achieve that financial objective. 
So as you can see here, let me sh uh, just share a bit of my screen just to facilitate understanding. Yeah, just a bit of my screen. Let me share, I hope you can see that. So a financial manager has a task ahead. And one of the tasks is to make three decisions. So as a financial person, one thing you must understand is your job as a financial manager. It's important. If you're going to succeed in the exam, you must get this right from the very beginning. What is your role? What is your job as a finance person? Remember, we are saying that financial management is the management of an organization finances in order for us to achieve a financial objective. So there are so many financial objectives. And for us to achieve those objectives, we have to make certain decisions. We have to put uh, forth actions that are going to help us to go and achieve those decisions, those objectives. So your job as a financial manager involves you making three important decisions. People make no mistake. You'll be making three very important decisions. One of them, you'll be making decisions about finances. As a finance person, you have to understand that you're going to be making financial decisions. These are extremely important decisions. For example, what do you think about, about financial decisions? For example, you're going to think about sources of finance. Where are you going to get the money to invest? Are you going to get the money from the shareholders? Or are you going to get the money from financial institutions? And if you're going to get this money, are you going to get to, to borrow the money in the long term? Are you going to get short-term borrowings? But remember, you're a finance manager. You're a finance person. You're a CFO, you're a finance director. You don't just borrow because the money is available. When you are making these financial decisions, you must ask yourself this question. Looking at our company operations, looking at our, our financial position, which one will be the most suitable source of finance? Short-term finance or long-term finance? Now, this is where you're supposed to remember what you learned in management accounting. In management accounting, there was a topic called cash budgets. There we were able to see the cash position of a company in a short term, for example, six months, for example, one year, we could see. So if you have a short term deficit, what do you do? If you have a long term deficit, what do you do? You don't just borrow money because it's available. You borrow considering the suitability because the longer the money stays, the more you are going to pay. If you borrow money from somebody and you're going to, to, to stay with the money for five years, obviously you pay more money in interest. But if you're going to borrow money and pay in six months, obviously you pay less money uh, in interest. But each term has got its advantage. Long term gives you some breathing space. Short term is riskier and has volatile interest rates. So as a finance person, you'll be able to think through these things. How do I borrow money? Is it in the short term? Is it in the long term? Now what helps you decide? Look at the company's financial health. That is going to be your job. You must understand that. But other than that, understand what are the advantages of borrowing in the short term or long term. For example, if my company is stressed in the short term, I don't want to go and borrow money which I'm going to pay tomorrow because I'm already stressed. If you borrow in the long term, you're going to have some breathing space, but it's going to be expensive. So you have to factor in all these other issues. Decision number two that you're going to be making as a financial a financial person, number one as a financial manager, is investment decisions. So remember, you have sourced for finance. You've gotten maybe money from the shareholders through issues of shares or from some financial institutions. Either you have gotten a short-term loan or a long-term loan or another, whatever it is. Then you say, hey, I have this money in front of me. How do I invest this money? Now you're making an investment decision. So a financial decision deals with where do we get the money? An investment decision deals with how, where do we put the money. So the very important skill to have here is investment appraisal. And this is what we saw last week on um, on on Tuesday in on on Tuesday in advanced management accounting. The examiner brought question one and and he added this NPV issues. All right, he was asking the the primary objective 
how can how, how are they going to achieve it? And it was about maximizing shareholders' worth. So investment appraisal becomes important in investment decisions. You must understand shareholder retains and how it works. Very important. You must understand NPVs and how they work. That's going to be your job. But again, decision number three is going to involve you making dividend decisions. Because hey, think of it this way, guys. If you get money from the shareholders, these people are taking a risk. They give you their hard-earned money to go and invest. So the only way you compensate them is through giving them what? Dividends. But again, you're going to be making dividend decisions, dividend policies. What is the suitable dividend? Is it a script dividend? Is it a zero payout? What type of dividend do we give our shareholders? Because they're the ones who are doing what? Who are guarding the ultimate risk. But remember, you have one important, one important task as a financial manager. That is to make the shareholders wealth. So how do you make these people wealth? The people are taking the risk, who are investing their hard-earned money. You give them uh, dividends or capital gain. All right? Capital gain is the increase in the number of sh in, in, in the in the value of shares. If the share price at the beginning was about two kwacha, at the end of the period, let them be 2.5 kwacha. So they can have some capital gain. A dividend is when you make the profits, all right? Uh, before the, uh, uh, retained earnings, then you, you share into what into dividends. You give them a benefit. They can enjoy themselves for taking a risk. That's your primary role. So as a financial manager, you have these three decisions which are going to help you to achieve your primary role, which is to maximize the shareholders' wealth. So these three decisions are very important. And for you to succeed in your quest to maximize shareholders' worth, your job is going to involve two important sides. So your job as a financial manager has got two sides. One of the sides I like it is planning, right? Planning is simply you convert a budget into financial terms. You convert information into financial terms. That's planning. You can't achieve your objectives without a plan. Remember we said financial management is simply the management of finances of an organization in order to achieve a financial objective. So for you as a financial manager, to achieve that objective, you need a plan. Why do you plan for anything in your life? Because you want to succeed. Now, a plan alone is not enough. As a financial manager, one of the things you must be good at is cost control. So your job has got two sides. You're supposed to come up with a proper plan, to help you achieve your objectives. But at the same time, you must keep your cost to the minimum. You don't want to spend shareholders' money carelessly. So these are the two sides. So for you to achieve your role, for you to work very well, how do you ensure all these sides are satisfied? Planning and control. And we learned this in management accounting, people. We did variance analysis. We did budgets. All right? So feel free to bring knowledge from other courses into this syllabus because it's important. Your analytical capabilities must be, you must be sober to pass this exam. I can assure you, you will never pass this paper by accident. It will never happen. All right? You must be sober. So if you have a plan, you should have a plan. You should be able to be good at planning, but also we're talking about controlling costs, cost management. So for you to achieve these two sides of your job, you must have this little girl here, a strategy. You must have a strategy. What is a strategy? A strategy is a course of action that helps you to achieve an advantage. So when it comes to making financing decisions, you must have a strategy. When it comes to making investment decisions, you must have a strategy. When it comes to making dividend decisions, you must have a strategy. Why? Because you want to achieve your primary objective, and that is to make the shareholders wealth through achieving your financial objectives. That's your strategy. So as a financial manager, you have to be sober. You have to think straight. Now, guys, somebody might be thinking, you know what, guys, we've been talking about objectives, objectives, objectives. What are these objectives? You have two objectives as a financial manager. One of them is called the primary objective. The other one is called the secondary objective. Hmm, really? 
So what's your primary objective? Now, this is where, you know, I don't like it when it comes to this part. Remember, your primary objective is to maximize shareholders' wealth. That's your primary objective. Whatever you do in your life as a financial manager, you must make sure shareholders are wealth. How do you make them wealth? You have to do two things. Give them dividends and increase their capital gain. Those are the two ways you're going to make the shareholders wealth. Dividends and capital gain. Capital gain is the, the, the increase in the value of the shares. For example, if you open with shares of two quarter per, per share at the beginning, at the end, they should be 2.5. You've given your shareholders some capital gain there. The difference is 0.5. So this gives us a formula. Shareholders return is equal to dividend plus capital gain. We are going to do more of these calculations very soon. So that is your primary objective. Now, guys, please tell me in the comments, okay? It's important I know how you find this information. Please, can you somebody give me a comment? Please, that's how I ask. Give me a comment if you are following, okay? I came live tonight to talk to you, my dear friends, because I care about you and I want to share my knowledge with you, all right? So please give me some comment and uh, I'll be grateful if you can share this video so that others can join us. I'll be very grateful to hear your comment and your contributions. And also just to, you know, if you can react, react. If you can share, please help us, give us some support so that we can uh, keep doing this. Give me a comment. How do you find this information? Please, that's important for me to know. How you, if you are following, you can just type following. Or you can simply tell me where you're watching me from. I'll be very grateful if you can do that. Please, 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 that's all we ask. Please, somebody give us that support. So now... Remember, that's your primary objective, making the shareholders worth through two things. Give them dividends, increase their capital gain. Now, guys, it is very difficult, all right? It is very difficult for you to achieve your primary objectives without your secondary objective. This is where I love advanced management accounting because advanced MA talks about non-financial performance indicators. And now this is why you, you, you may want to apply that information. But I'm, I'm not going to go into those details. So here we're going to go to secondary objectives. What are your secondary objectives? Secondary objectives are going to involve liquidity. Now, when you talk about liquidity, you talk about the company's financial muscle, the ability to pay its obligations that they for due. Can you pay people or you do you have enough financial muscle? Here we're going to do ratios. So now here we are going to do a topic called working capital management. Okay, we'll talk more about, you know, liquidity ratios, the quick ratios, uh, payable days, and things like that. It's going to be very important. So this is very important for both financial management and advanced financial management because it's important for you to refresh and understand your job before you get into the specifics and the details. Very important session. And it, this, it came in advance, Amy. I'm going to show you a paper which your friends wrote. These bits were in the paper for last semester. Advanced MA, not advanced FM, right? One question number one. And this is, this, I have the paper. This is the paper for uh, December. Uh, no, it was for March. Yeah, I think I have a number of papers. Let me show you something. Let me read something for you here. Okay, it was, uh, yeah, this was, uh, yeah, March, last week. Last week. Last week last week yeah it was question number one all right the examiner said that uh the examiner said said this here's what he said he said capiti group poc was founded in 1991 by four brothers and it has traded successfully over the years its overall objective is to create the shareholders wealth so the advanced ma people all right. And the question, if you look at the question, part A said, evaluate two most appropriate performance measures that would address the overall objective of KGPOC. 15 marks. Very important information. Whether you're doing advanced MA, you're doing advanced FM, or you're doing FM, this session is extremely important. So you can see those objectives we're talking about. So now when it comes to second objectives, you need liquidity. So liquidity will help you to achieve your primary objectives. Because if you have enough cash to pay the people that you owe, you manage your cash very well, you're going to remain with something to pay dividends. 
sales growth. If the sales go up, right, this is going to give you profitability, you're going to pay dividends. So sales growth, profitability, gearing, right, these are going to be important for to achieve your what? Your primary objective. So without your, your secondary objectives, it will be difficult for you to achieve your primary objective. So here we're going to talk about uh, working capital, we're going to talk about business finance, business valuations, all those things are going to be talked about in these things so that we can understand how those can support your initial goal of making the shareholders wealth. All right? So guys, if you are following, I'll be happy. If you have a question, type it in the comments. I'll be happy to tag somebody you know who's doing FM or advanced FM. That would be fantastic. So now guys, remember here, you might be saying, but, but, but what, what is going on here? All right? Why? Why are we having to go through all this? Why is it that you can just have somebody dedicated specifically to make the shareholders worth? Why? Now, remember, in the real world, things don't happen as planned. Because the people that you have employed, all right, to maximize the worth of the shareholders are human beings. They have families. They have children. And sometimes they have problems. So because of that, it may be difficult sometimes for them to maximize shareholders' worth. It might be difficult for them to put the interest of the shareholders first. So in the end, these people may begin to do things in their own best interest at the expense of the shareholders' wealth. That's the problem. And because of that problem, we are going to have this thing called the agency theory. The agency theory is going to help us look at the relationship between management and the shareholders. So as a financial manager, you must understand the relationship that exists between you and the shareholders, because you are a steward. You've been entrusted with the responsibility to make these people worth. But sometimes they're making so much money and they're not getting rich. Let me give you an example, guys. Let me give an example of what happened. Uh, I did a research. I did a, a simple research, uh, recently, and here, here are my findings. Let me show you some of my findings. It was a very sad finding. Uh, I didn't like it either. And I, I'm, I'm sure you, you also will not like it. I, did, I, I checked through Coca-Cola company, okay, uh, a few months ago. And here is what I found. Look at these numbers here, so that you understand where this is coming from. Here's what I found. In, uh, look at uh, the studies here. Employees in Coca-Cola in 2021, their studies averaged between 30,000 to 180,000 per annum. These were annum annual salaries. The CEO averaged a $24.6 million per annum. Can you see that? Employees are getting $30,000 to $180,000 per annum. People are working so hard in the factories. The CEO was $24.6 million. And look at the shareholder. One of the shareholders was working with about $700 million. You know some guy called Warren Buffett, Jeff Bezos? Those guys worked out with millions and millions of dollars. Now you can imagine the difference. The CEO is employed to think so that the company can run, so that the shareholders can be wealth, all right? And this guy worked out with $24.6 million. And then the, the, C, the, the shareholder is going home with 20, is $700 million. So if you divide... You say 700 million, you divide by the 24.6 million, it's about 28.45 times more than the CEO, somebody who's, who's doing the actual work, who is thinking, who's making up a uh, strategy, who's spending sleepless nights, is getting 28 times less than the shareholders. So because of this, sometimes the human thing clicks in. And then the financial managers, they begin to act in their own best interest because they know they're making the money and they, they feel they're not appreciated. So what do they do? They begin to put themselves first. So as a financial manager, it's important to understand the relationship that you have, you and who, and of course, the shareholders. It's extremely, extremely important. So now we have this problem here, people, where the shareholders now can begin to act in the best, the, the, the management can begin to act in their own best interests and neglect the shareholders. So this gives us what is called the agency problem. What is the agency problem? The agency problem 
is where management fails to work according to the shareholders' expectations. And this problem is caused by a number of issues. For example, laziness. You have managers who are just lazy people. You have these guys who are in offices twitching their thumbs, busy playing video games. What is wrong with you people? You've been given capital to go and make their shoulders worth, and you're playing video games. You have such managers in companies. All they do all day is play video games and send junior employees to do the work for them. They are playing video games. They can't think. They are extremely inefficient. They can't get anything done. That may cause the agency problem because it means the management is acting, is not acting according to shareholders' expectation. What is the expectation of the shareholders? Is to be wealth. But they can't be wealth because the management is lazy. They are playing video games, texting girlfriends in offices, all right? Playing sojo in offices. Come on now. Those may cause problems. Heavy perks and allowances. Management, they're always having workshops, seminars, workshops, traveling for unnecessary stuff, giving themselves allowances and heavy perks at the expense of the shareholders' wealth. Sometimes risk averse. There's nobody as ugly as a risk averse person. Risk averse people don't take any risks in their lives. And some of them even felt to do the right thing because they want to hide behind rules. No, there's a rule which says don't do this. But can you use common sense? For you to pass these papers, you have to use common sense. Sometimes they're going to work out a project. You do your NPV and you discover your NPV is positive. But your internal rate of return is close to your cost of capital. Then you say, you know what? Don't invest. You're using common sense. Yes, the NPV is positive, but you can't invest because any slight mistake, you're going to make a loss. Use common sense. So sometimes if you are risk averse, you're going to be much more focused on short-term projects. There are people like that. Okay? People don't take any risk in their lives. They wake up in the morning. They go to work with a small tie. They sit in a very small office with a small aircon. They can't start a business. They get paid. They don't invest. They go to the mall. They buy a nice shoe, a nice tie. They have an expensive phone. They have no nice blankets, not even a nice bed. They sleep on a very hard mattress. They have no savings, no investments, nothing. They have Brazilian hair. They think in the short term. They can't think about tomorrow. There are people like that. Husband and wife, married for five years, 10 years, no land. Keep on renting. 10 years in marriage, nothing to their names. Not even nice blankets, okay? There are people like that. But they look, they look clean. They look expensive. They look nice. They, have expensive. they even have a nice car. But they have nothing to their name. Risk averse makes you think in the short term. You don't take risks that are going to take you Remember, for you to progress, you must take calculated risks as a financial manager. This is why we said your job involves the three decisions. Financing decision, investing decision, and the dividend decision. So under investing decisions, you're going to take some risks that are calculated. But if you are risk averse, you are not acting according to shareholders' expectations. That's a problem. Incompetency. You, you employ your cousin. Because you like each other, then you, you bring your, your cousin to be the finance manager. Come on, what is wrong with you? If you're going to employ your relative, then make sure they are qualified. So incompetent management may make it difficult for the shareholders to do what? To become worse. So now, now, how do you resolve this problem? The agency problem. How do you resolve it? Because it's, it's, it's stressing you, obviously, all right? You don't like what's happening, so how do you resolve this problem? Now, one way of resolving the agent's problem, for example, if people are lazy, sometimes it's because they are not motivated. Maybe you're a bad employer. So they are employers of workers when they know it. Ah, the quarter of your so much. Ah, the quarter of your so much. What is wrong with you? They are employers like that. They make a lot of money. They can't give you a simple bonus. If they give you a small sad advance, you have a funeral. They are supposed to come and deduct. At some point, simple 500 quarter, they can't give it to you. They are supposed to deduct from your side. They are such kind of stingy, stingy employers, stingy people. So because an employer is so stingy, it becomes difficult for people to be motivated. You begin to steal because, uh, don't steal, stealing is bad. This is an example. People may begin to do things because they are not motivated. So can you resolve the problem? 
Can you introduce something called performance-related pay, where you pay people according to performance so that people can be motivated, pay them when they work according to their performance, performance-related pay. Maybe give them some share options. Now, we learned this in financial reporting. There's a standard called IFRS number two, share-based payments. Like I said, this course, guys, nothing beats financial management. This is one of the best you ever do. Your business acumen will never be the same after you do this course and you understand it. I can guarantee you that. People that prepared this course are smart people. And if you look at the way the Zika examiner does this exam, man, that, whoever does it is a genius, all right? The Zika examiner is a pure genius. If you understand this course, you're going to appreciate the exam. This, this man thinks, this woman thinks, you see the geniusness in action. It's not a course you're going to be lazy about and pass. You will never pass by accident. This one is another, another level of analytical capabilities. You must be serious. You need somebody who is knowledgeable, knows things in the real world. Somebody who practices. For example, I am a certified financial analyst. I, I do numbers every day. I love doing these things, all right? So you need somebody who understands the practical aspect of finance in the real world to be able to pass this exam. You need to be serious. So the same thing happens in companies. If the boss is stingy, you don't give your, your employees some motivation, they become lazy. They become incompetent. They stop caring. So give them some motivation. Give them shares. When you give them shares, share-based options, whatever it is, they're going to be motivated to protect. It's like, uh, you know, when I was in, um, in Kafue, there's a man I know who has two cars. He worked as a taxi driver for some gentleman who told him, you know what, I'm going to give you this taxi all you have to, to do, pay me back so and so. After this man has reached the car, he was, guys, this man used that car very well. He protected it. Even when he, he got, to, when he finished paying the owner of the car, the money, the car still looked new. The same thing can happen when you tell the management, you know what? We're going to give you shares after three years. In financial reporting, we've learned about share-based options and how they invest. We're not going to go into details here. Okay? Sometimes you may use corporate governance. Corporate governance may help you solve what the agency problem. Because corporate governance sometimes may eliminate one man having too much power. For example, we, where there's a CEO who is also the board chair, that can be sorted out. All right? The board balance, that can be sorted out. The needs and the execs, that can be sorted out through corporate governance practices acceptable. Board committees, Remuneration committees, audit committees, risk management committees, you know, all those things can, can reduce the agency problem because the, the audit committee may provide checks and balances on the directors. You may put both internal controls, all right, internal audit function. This may, help, may be able to help Im, uh, improve the relationship with what? With the shareholders. So all these things may help you to improve to resolve the agency problem. So sometimes to have good employees, you must be a good employer. Don't be a stingy morgan. An employer who can't give a 500 square to their employees, but you want them to work 24 seven. If you become a good employer, employees will sacrifice for you. They will do things for you that they would otherwise wouldn't do for themselves because they love you, they appreciate how you keep them. So to be a great finance manager, you must understand the different kinds of stakeholders that you have. For example, you have internal stakeholders, external stakeholders, and connected stakeholders. So you, a good financial mutant understands the needs of each of these stakeholders. For example, when you talk about internal stakeholders, you're talking about management. Management is part of the internal stakeholders. All right? Employees are part of the internal stakeholders. What do they want from you? Management want prestige, nice cars, big nice offices, nice titles. They want that. Allowances, heavy perks. They want that. All right? Employees, they want good conditions of service, career development, job security, ability to grow and participate. They want to feel a sense of belonging. How about the external stakeholders and the connected ones, the government and the customers and suppliers? What do they want from you? Suppliers want you to be able to give them continued business. They want to pay them on time. Customers want value for money, all right? The government wants you to pay the minimum wage, but also pay taxes. 
So a financial mutant understands his environment and the stakeholders who are involved and what they want from you. Because when you make financial decisions, you must have people in mind whom you are targeting. So now here we are going to do something called Mendro Stakeholder Analysis to help you know at each stage who do you impress and who do you put under the bus. You can't impress everyone at the same time. For example, you know Coca-Cola, guys. You know what Coke does? Coke is a supplier who has a strong bargaining power. They even put the price of their Coke. They, de they detect, determine how much profit you must make. They say this bottle of 750 mils is uh, four quarter. And it's four quarter. Like post newspaper, they used to put a price. Even the must, their, their uh, meal or uh, their nation, they put... 15 quarter. You can't go and sell at more than that. They have a price put already. They determine how much you make. So some, some stakeholders are so powerful. You have to understand what they want from you. They can improve your profits. So here you must do stakeholder analysis using main draw, which we are going to do in a class. Okay? We are going to do that very well. This is just an introduction. We're just introducing the course to you to just give you what the course is about in a, in a nutshell. Okay, we're going to go into details in class and do talk more about these things. You're gonna love this. This guy, this is the sweetest sex. This thing is sweet. Okay, if you just follow FM properly and advanced FM properly, you're gonna love it. It's sweet, it's enjoyable, it's practical, it's real. It helps you improve in your business, it helps you to come up with proper strategies, able to grow. It's just something you're going to love. You love these people. This is nice, it's like one of the sweetest things I've ever done. It's very nice. So a good financial manager understands his environment. That's how it works. Know what each stakeholder wants from you. So strategic business analysis is going to be important here. So I say, if you are doing financial management, at least also do strategic business analysis because some of the things are similar. You're going to be helped. It's like you are doing, you are doing advanced management accounting. You've not done strategic business analysis. It's going to be difficult. So if you do strategic business analysis and then you go to do advanced management accounting, it becomes easier because most of the things are similar. The, the logic is a bit similar, except that in strategic business analysis, the examiner gives you the problem and asks you to advise. In management accounting, the examiner now asks you to, to sort out, to identify the problem or asks you to measure something. All right. So the approach is the same, just that we're looking for different things. In in advanced MA, we look for the source. In SBA, we advise. That's where the, some of the things happen. So, like we said, again, a good financial mutant, financial manager, should be able to understand how to work in the not-for-profit organization. What do you look for? For example, this again was a question last week. Okay? This was a question last week. It was question number four in the exam. Like I'm saying, this is a very important topic, guys. This was question number four last week. I think I have a paper here. Let me, let me read for you. Here's the question. The question number four, yeah. The question read, explain the concept of efficiency and effectiveness within the context of local government. Use performance measures in road maintenance operations or some other local authorities' activities to illustrate your points. This was a question in advanced management accounting. So if, if you go to advanced MA and advanced FM, these are similar. The examiner may even put certain things in each of uh, these papers. SBA, FM, advanced FM, advanced MA, they are, they are very similar papers. All right? They are very similar papers. So something in FM can be put in advanced MA. So you must really be sober. So somebody who didn't understand this one from FM and was doing advanced MA, May I have failed this one? So the examiner for Zika is a genius. I love, I love the, the, way, the, the way he brings out stuff, how he leads you, how he shows you the way, how he just makes you understand that, you know, Leslie does not pay. He makes that very clear. You can't pass by accident. That's a guarantee. So now, guys, here's the issue. How about, you know, your job as a finance manager in a not for profit organization? It's going to be different because remember, in a profit making company, you are supposed to maximize shareholders' worth. You're supposed to give them dividends, You're supposed to increase capital gain, You're supposed to improve what sales growth, profitability, maintain liquidity, reduce gearing, reduce on debt. You don't want to be highly geared. All right? 
But in the not for profit, it becomes different. All right? Because now you have the three E's economy, you have to get cheap input, but good quality. Efficiency means cheaper. Input and output maximization. You don't want to spend so much. You don't want to be to, to do waste for expenditure. It's cheaper. Effectiveness, all right? Effectiveness means better. So just because you are cheaper and you're not better does not make you a genius. You're going to lose clients. So again, in class, we are going to go in details. And there's this simple question here, which I would like you to try. A SL, SL's share price is 3.5 at the end of 2021, and this includes a capital gain of 0.75. Okay, so we have, we have a company called SL. Their share price is 3.5 at the at the end of 2021. Okay, and this one includes a capital gain of how much of 0.75 since the beginning of the period. A dividend of 0.25 has just been declared for 2021. Required. What is the 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 shareholders return for SL's PLC? The formula is there. Shareholders return is equal to dividend plus capital gain. I think I gave it to you somewhere here. Yeah, here this one here. So it's something you're going to do in class. You can try it when you come to class. We are going to do, I'm going to explain this one to you. So guys, for tonight, I just came to introduce this syllabus, this uh, the FM and advanced FM, okay? I'm the one that does both FM and advanced FM. I'm extremely in love with these two papers. They are sweet. You are going to enjoy yourself. All right. And, and I love the fact that because I deal with the practical issues of things in the real world for years now. So it has become almost, you, know, you can call me at midnight and I'm going to tell you what's going on. So you need a proper grip to understand FM. There are courses you can do self-study and there are courses you must ask for a technique, people. That's being smart. Okay. Some things you can do soft study, yes, but it's going to take you to us. Imagine you do soft study, you fail five times, then you come and pass. So what? You are wasting time and money. Why don't you find somebody who can make it easier for you the first time that you pass? That's what we do. We have produced country bests here. Not once, a number of times. Ask your colleagues. Our results are there to show. Right? So this is our first class. So when we, so when we are starting, if you want to enroll, you can call that number. You can simply WhatsApp me on that number, 0953-979798. See the number that you can call me or WhatsApp me on. 0953-979798. This is the first class for the June 2023 exam classes. So if you want to enroll in FM, that would be fantastic. So in our next class, we're going to do now, you know, uh, uh, we're going to consolidate and now get into the specifics and details. Of course, we're going to get into economic environments. Yeah. This paper is easy to pass, but I'm going to tell you one thing. It's a bit involving. It's why you need a proper technique and the strategy. It's a bit involving. It's more demanding in the exam. I can even say it's a bully. Nothing beats this at your level. I have to be honest with you. But hey, with a proper strategy in place, we have produced excellent pass rates. So our, our, our techniques work. The Rusamba way is the better way because it works. It has been tried, tested, trusted, proven, and produced excellent results. So if you are writing in June, you are not late. So just a quick run of what is happening. We have a number of courses. We have financial accounting. We have law. We have financial reporting. We have advanced financial reporting. We have management accounting. We have advanced management accounting. We have audit and assurance. We have advanced audit and assurance. We have taxation. We have advanced taxation. We have strategic business analysis, uh, strategic business leader. And we have, uh, of course, um, you know, uh, public sector audit. So we basically we have all the courses at level two. And we have the business route and the public sector route. The only courses we do not have at the moment is those at level one. For example, we don't have um, this financial, uh, quantitative analysis. Uh, we don't have economics. And we don't have those those other two two papers, but the rest we have. We have all of them at level two. At the application level, we have all of them. DA level, we have all of them. And we, we have also the advisor level, we have all of them. Advanced reporting, advanced audit, SBA, advanced FM, advanced MA, advanced tax, public sector audit. So we have those two routes, and all of them are the at the application level and uh, low and financial accounting at level one. We just started on the 15th last week for some courses. We are doing some introductions. 
Serious learning starts on the 26th, tomorrow. That's when we start with serious learning. So this week, we've been doing some introductions. So you're not late. And our syllabuses are going to be done. We always finish our syllabuses, all right? Ask those who are in audit, they'll tell you we finished on time. Ask financial reporting, we did. Uh, ask those in financial accounting, you know, our, we always do this. We've been doing this for a very long time. So feel free to come through. Don't fail when help is available. So guys, give me some feedback. Tell me how you found this information. I'll be grateful to hear from you. If you have a comment for me or you have a question for me, that will be very helpful. This is the time uh, I would like to take a few questions before I leave. And also just to make a few shout outs to some people I can see. Of course, I see George was asking me to tell you more about the whole program. The program starts uh, today for, for financial management, for advanced, and also for level two. This was the introduction, all right? But we'll get into details as we go. We meet on Saturday and Sunday for financial management. The time is 10 hours, even though we've suggested to go to 14 hours, all right? Uh, yeah, that's what happened. So if you want to enroll, simply uh, WhatsApp, the number 953 All right, uh, Mr. Chris, good, I can hear you, I can see you. Uh, Styles are fantastic. Joseph, okay, great. Messi, fantastic. Josephine, uh, thank you so much for coming through. Richard Pierce, good to have you here. Okay, wonderful. And thank you so much, we appreciate. Artist Chambo, great to see you. Uh, there's a question, and we have a question here from Lawrence, he says, so which courses should one enroll when coming from DA to CA? I think the best is uh, FM and SBA. Those, those speak to each other very well. Yeah, because FM has got some things that are in SBA. Business valuation, finance, those are very similar stuff. And the, the analysis is, a bit, is also very similar. Okay, you may want to do those ones. Yeah, so those are the courses that we have on offer. Okay, so uh, send us a WhatsApp message. We'll be happy to respond to you. We have, we have financial accounting, we have law, financial reporting, management accounting, audit and assurance, taxation, financial management, strategic business analysis, strategic business leader, advanced financial reporting, advanced audit and assurance, advanced management accounting, advanced APM, advanced uh, financial management, that's uh, AFM, advanced tax and strategic, uh, that's uh, public sector audits. All those courses are available. Don't stress. Come and experience greatness. Even if you failed before, all right? Let me tell you something here. This is a video I did some years back, but it is very relevant. Please, guys, watch this, okay? Just, just a few minutes. I want you to watch this video just now. Just a few minutes and understand, listen to it. Even if you failed before, this is going to be important for you. Listen to this. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Private Tutor SL. My name is Rusambo Shadwick, and uh, this message is uh, specifically meant for our dear friends who did not make it in the previous exams. I want to tell you a simple story. You see, um, I had a friend of mine back uh, in school, and at some point we wrote our exams together. My friend did not clear, so I cleared, and uh, I got good marks, I must say. So I was so excited about it, but when I learned that my friend did not clear, it just broke me. I just didn't know how to share my news with my friend that I got good marks and I'm happy about it when my friend was sad. So, for some reason, I decided not to talk to my friend there and then that I cleared, but just comforted my friend uh, for them not being able to clear. So, uh, it's because of this that uh, I understand how it feels to fail and how it feels to have a friend who has not paid it. But one thing that I came to learn from my friend's uh, experience, even my own experience, was that uh, my friend couldn't believe why he failed. He felt that uh, the Zika examiner had wrongly judged him. He felt misjudged and he said if he had some money at that point, he would have paid for a remark. And many people feel like that. Many of us several times have felt like, ah, where did I miss it? I just feel like this exam is just not fair. I did everything I could. I answered the paper was easy, but I don't understand why I didn't clear. 
So one I, one day I called my friend and uh, I asked him to just come and review the same paper that he didn't clear with me. So we sat down and uh, we did questions from the paper that he didn't clear together. And as we were discussing, he said, oh, I see. I asked him, what do you see? He told me now he could see why he did not clear. So you see, in that moment, I learned a lesson. Sometimes you may be sure that what you are doing is the right thing. When actually what you are doing is the opposite of the right thing, or is close to the right thing which want to give you more marks in the exam. So it's important when you don't clear, it's okay not to clear, sit down, find a reason why you did not clear. Do not shift the blame on anyone else, not on the examiner, not on the lecturer, but just on yourself. Sit down and review, like I did with my friend, review the paper again together. Because when you discuss with somebody else, they will help you see areas where you yourself thought you were doing it right when actually you are not. So please, it's not the time to be depressed or the time to give up, but the time to sit down and reflect. Let this be a motivation for you to want to do better next time. Uh, there are many people who failed in this life and uh, I want to mention that uh, from my personal experience, and also from being able to start with different students, I have seen that uh, most students, when they fail, they find it hard to accept. Some of them even hide that they didn't clear. And uh, truth be told, those students who hide when they don't clear, they are more likely to come and fail again when they attempt than those who openly talk about it when they don't clear. Because those who talk about it, they are more likely to pass because they will get help. They all they ask questions and they will, they will reverse with friends and then they'll be helped even to do better. But those who hide and then they lie that they've cleared, they find themselves studying in isolation because they've told a lie to their friend that they cleared when they did it. So when it comes to studying the same paper they didn't clear, they'll only study it when they are alone. So please, no matter how much you are tempted to hide when you clear, it's fine not to clear. Sometimes things happen in the exam room. Some people run out of time sometimes, sometimes just because maybe you just missed a simple point and it makes everything go sideways. So don't be ashamed if you didn't clear. Talk about it to a friend. Of course, you can't tell the whole world. You know, not everyone can have that, that uh, courage. But share with somebody and ask for help. When the help is available, be willing to accept it and be teachable. Before you know it, you'll find the reason, like my friend did, when we devised together and he said, oh, now I see. You too will be able to see exactly why you did not clear. If you open up and you do everything you can to be able to do better next time. And for those of us uh, who did better, it's not the opportunity to look down on those who did not do better. Because people fail for many reasons. Uh, we've got people in different homes where some homes are like, a farm. They are very, very busy homes where people, when they leave school, they go home, they have no time to touch books. So there are many reasons why people don't clear. It's not just about studying. Sometimes, even when you study, but you don't have a proper strategy, it can also make you fail to do better in the exam. So my word of encouragement to all of you who did not make it is that uh, we are with you. And should you need help, please feel free to come along with us at the private tutor SL. We'll be able to assist you and also be able to give you mentorship sessions where we provide uh, our students with uh, the answer structure, including the common, uh, is it, I don't know if it's a slogan or there's a term that is going on on social media, the Rosamboy, uh, which is simply the freeway. What, what that means is that uh, most of our students, we teach them how to answer exam questions. And that's what they are calling the Rosamboy. <laughs> it is not any magical, it is just something that we have discovered that helps and works in the exam and it has proven to be working. Even the previous exams, it worked, and uh, many of our students called and said there was some boy and it works. So it is simply a way of helping our students know the answer structure. Because sometimes what makes some students not too clear is not that they didn't study, 
Sometimes it could be because they just didn't know how to put answers together and then they end up messing up everything. So at the Private Tutor SL, we help students to also know the answer structure. So not just teaching them things, principles, solving questions, but also taking a personal interest in helping them know how to structure their answers. There are simple things such as explain, evaluate, briefly, analyze, etc. Such, such verbs, they have a way the examiner wants you to respond. So also it's important that you know the answer structure. So we encourage you and uh, we are with you, don't be discouraged. Please keep on pushing until you get there. All the best to the forthcoming exams. And uh, we are happy to also mention that uh, we have a YouTube channel where we are posting most of these videos. So even if you can't afford, those of you who can't afford to buy lecture videos, just need a five quarter bundle to go to YouTube and watch the whole lecture video, which will go to assist you tremendously. So thank you so much for joining me. And uh, I say all the best to all of you. Till next time, this bye bye. So there you go, guys. I hope that helps. So whether you failed before, don't be discouraged. Passing an exam is not a sign of intelligence. I, I have students have lectured for two days, and they have passed. One of them was even one of the, was even among the best. Sometimes somebody may passing an exam simply means you you are fortunate enough to find where to study. That make you smart or intelligent. No, okay. Passing an exam needs a strategy. Exams are not meant for intelligent people. Exams are made for average people. So that anybody, even if you, you, you're not that smart, but you've studied even a bit, you're able to pass. So instead of stressing, trying here and there, feel free to spend a few coins so that you can pass once and for all. Your friends who come here graduate. You, every semester of people graduating at the advisory level, finishing, diploma level, finishing. Because we have techniques that work. Don't stress doing self-study. Self-study is not for everyone. You have to be honest with your mental faculties. You need the strategy. Especially for courses like FM and advanced FM. You need someone to simply show you how to do things to avoid wasting money and time. So guys, thank you very much. I hope this show was beneficial to someone. I hope you learned something. And I hope that you enjoyed yourself. We start learning tomorrow. Today was simple introduction. But tomorrow we start all the classes. Serious learning starts tomorrow. If you are not late, all right? We have it all planned out. You are not late. If you think you are late, don't worry. We have you covered. You are going to do everything on time. You'll be done and you'll be ready. There are two things people tell me when they come here. One of them, they say that I wish I made you last year. The second one is that they say they can see themselves passing. I want you to say the same, right? I don't usually come to advertise because our marketing managers are you, our students. But today we come like this because we are starting sales learning tomorrow and we invite you to come out in a row in different courses. So thank you very much for participating. I'm so uh, glad to have an audience of attentive listeners like yourselves. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good night and I'm going to see you tomorrow. So it's bye from for me and I leave you with this as you go to sleep. It's a one minute video that can just help you to say good night. I, I think that that question about intelligence, I've, I've addressed it on different platforms and I want to repeat, I want to, I'm not changing my statement, but just for information. When I say that passing an exam is not an indication of intelligence, I don't joke, I mean it, it's, it's the truth. Intelligence has got nothing to do with passing an exam. Maybe it does, but not that much. If you pass an exam, there should be no reason to boast or to feel that you are better than anybody else. It is okay for you to feel good because you worked hard, you studied, and you made it, but don't make you a genius. Passing an exam simply means that you were fortunate enough to find what you studied in the exam and you made the best out of it and you passed. It, it, it is by no means a sign of intelligence. I have seen students who have gone to the exam three days before the exam, they do a question and boom, it pops up. They, they make use of it, they pass. Maybe they even become the highest student. Does that mean they are very intelligent? No. Somebody just got fortunate and they found what they did. Even on the last minute, they made use of it, they pass. Intelligence is different. If exams were prepared with an intelligence in mind, 
very few boards be passing. Exams are not for indigenous students, they are for average individuals. So that even somebody who is just studied a bit and has understood a bit of the concepts can be able to pass. It is not a measure of indigenous. So there should be no reason for you to feel down when you don't clear. It should be no reason for you to feel big headed when you pass. Because either way, it is not a measure of indigenous.